WWDC 2024, huge announcements today. We're going to take you through our recap, Apple Vision Pro, all of the platform updates, Mac, iOS, and then we're going to cover the massive headline, which is Apple Intelligence, Apple Vision Pro, finally coming to Australia. Finally. Crazy, huh? I know. I thought it was never going to happen. That's it. Pre-order dates. Pre-order is 28th of June, so really soon, and it'll be here 12th of July. How much are they asking for it? Starting at about five nine nine, and then going up to seven nine nine. Vision OS two announced. I saw that it supports uh, larger displays. Yep. So up to two four K, um, which is huge, huge, yeah. huge. So moving now to um, all the major OS um, platform updates, yep. starting with um, iOS. I think the big key feature for me is some of the customizable features now on the home screen. Like customization of appearance. Yeah, so yeah. the layout, you don't have to have the same set layout. There's a lot more customization as well as um, the control center. You can flick uh, inside it and you can go yep. into your home, your home settings, and then your music as well. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, and you can change the icons um, on your lock screen as well. So it doesn't have to just be the flash and the camera. Uh, Apple apps and third party apps, you can now um, lock them, right? Yep. And you can hide them. And what about iPad OS? So iPadOS, hey, calculator. Um, and then there's math notes. Yeah. Maybe not for me, but for, for education, for students. Something that did kind of catch my eye was smart script. So it learns your handwriting. Yeah. And it will, as you're writing, uh, a couple seconds later, it will learn what it is you wrote and tidy it up for you. And also screen sharing. Yeah. So you can now share your screen, your iPad screen to someone else. Yeah. Yeah, so if you need to help your mum and you don't want to go over to her house, you can ask her to share a screen. Mac OS Sequoia. Sequoia. Did I say that right? You did. So, um, yeah, what's it? What's in this update? A few new things. Um, the one I took away from it was iPhone mirroring. This is a game changer. Yeah. I mean, if you leave your phone in your bag yep. and you want to check it for whatever reason, you might have got a message or you just want to see what's up, you can just open up the app that's going to be on your dock now and you can see everything that you would see on your iPhone. Also, the uh, passwords app. Yep. So I, I imagine it's just um, building upon Keychain. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I think pretty much, yeah, almost replacing it, I guess, in a sense. Right. Is it like one password? Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, very comparable. Right. So now you can include your uh, two-factor authentication within the app itself. Right. Um, so yeah, it is. It is very similar and you know very handy. And then layouts. Yep. Another one I really liked. Yeah. So is that kind of like the Windows one? Snap layouts? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Pretty much same kind of concept. Yeah. You know, you have multiple windows open up on your screen. They're not all fitting properly, but you want to see everything at the same time. Yep. It'll give you suggested sort of pre-selected areas where you can move these to. And also presenter previews. Yeah. So yep. now you have the option to actually see what you're about to present before just jumping straight into it. So watch your OS. Yep. So we've got the Vitals app, right? Yep. So now you've got an area where you can actually just get a summary of all your vitals rather than having to go into the health app and, you know, go into it one by one. That you can view from your watch. Exactly. So the most anticipated feature out of them all. Yes. What was that? Apple intelligence. I think it's going to be a really good tool for people to have right at their fingertips. Um, obviously, it's not going to be available to everyone. So you need to have an iPhone 15 Pro onwards. Right. Um, or one of the M series Macs as well. So... That's something to keep in mind for a lot of people. I noticed on the keynote that they kind of broke it down into four key areas. Yeah. Uh, it was language, it was images, it was actions, and then that personal context, yeah. understanding what's on device and how it can leverage that information to kind of serve you best. Yeah. So language is probably a good place to start. And, you know, we've used ChatGPT a lot at work uh, to do things like um, summarizing things for us, um, yeah. changing tone, uh, on, on certain uh, sentences or even paragraphs. Just anything. Yeah. So it sounds like they're going to bake that in. Exactly. To, uh, to the, uh, across the OSs. Then you got images. Yep. So you can now, you know, create your own AI generated images to send to your friends, you know, based off their appearance or their um, emoji, all that kind of stuff. Just like everyone else, I'm already thinking about the first one or two people that I want to generate an image of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think that'll be quite fun. And then you got actions. Yep. Now, this is really where it gets powerful. Um, I think the example that they gave in the keynote was just being able to 
uh, identify someone's address on a text message yep. and then you can ask Siri to then add that address to someone's contacts. So, and then lastly, that personal context element where it's bringing all that together. Again, uh, the main thing that they stressed was um, the fact that it was on device. And I think everyone's concerned and I'm sure probably yours as well is, well, where's my data? And, and if it does go to a cloud, which cloud and what are they exactly. going to do with it? So they introduced private cloud compute yep. for those times that you need to be able to send requests up to an AI server to do the LLM stuff. Um, and they're saying that they're going to have third party people to verify uh, what is what is and what isn't on these servers to ensure, to give you peace of mind that your stuff's not up there. Yeah. I mean, it's a big call and it's the right thing to do. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, look, we're, we're sort of just going off what they're telling us at the moment. And yeah. I think you just have to with a lot of this. Um, it is a point of difference for Apple. Right. I think if this is what they're aiming for. So is Apple going to integrate OpenAI into Apple Intelligence? So they've kind of positioned it as in they're going to use it when they need it. Got it. So you don't need to sign up to it. Right. It's free to use. Yep. Um, and it's not actually going to store any of your data. All right. So, so many announcements. Um, when do we start seeing this stuff? So as usual, um, it is full which is our spring. Okay. Um, but that's going to be the public betas, so right. not the full released version. So if you want to test it out, that will be available to the public. You can sign up to the beta program. And that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching the recap. WWDC runs for the rest of the week. Uh, more business-specific announcements will be um, out in a couple of days. So please stay tuned uh, to our socials and our channels for that. Um, but that's it from me and Christina. Uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.